Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Mudd. Fan of South Plains politics. Here's your talking points for this week. Help needed by COVID patients and help wanted at Texas hospitals as nurses and doctors leave the profession, but help may be coming. And Lubbock police lay out the welcome mat for their new East Lubbock neighbors. Why the hope is this changes the look and perception of our police. From the studios of KMAC Television in Lubbock, your local election headquarters. This is Talking Points with Brian Mudd. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Also this week, numbers don't lie. There's no way to know how many people didn't fill out a census form, but these things traditionally give us a pretty accurate representation of life at home and where we're all going as a country. The 2020 census information came in, and what we have so far tells us we're pretty sure of three things. Lubbock is actually growing in population as fast as we thought it was. The Texas Hispanic population is about to become more of a political force. And state Republicans had better show up in West Texas a lot more to secure votes or things might change in a hurry. So what happens with all this information? Well, a lot, starting with redrawing the district lines for everything from U.S. Congress to small town council people to reflect where the census shows people are. But the fight over interpretations of these numbers is often as hard as getting people to fill out the census form in the first place. The redistricting process begins September 1st, but now KMX Ryan Chandler digs into that process. Ten years in the making and long overdue, a new portrait of America. Initial data from the U.S. Census Bureau released today shows substantial demographic changes across the country and puts Texas on top. The Lone Star State grew faster than any other state in the country this decade, adding 4 million new Texans. We kept pace here in Lubbock as well. The Hub City grew at a rate four points higher than the national average, welcoming nearly 32,000 more people, and with them, more money. The city will get more revenue, um, largely because of growth. But this data is also the first step towards redrawing the lines that determine your representation in Congress, the state legislature, city hall, even local school boards. Civil rights lawyers in Texas point out that process has always been less about population than politics. Unfortunately, Texas, the legislature has uh, been found by courts to violate the Constitution or the Voting Rights Act every decade uh, for the past half century. And last decade, it was a similar story where uh, particularly the increasing Hispanic population led to new congressional seats, but those seats were drawn to uh, diminish the voting power of Hispanics, and the court found that that was unconstitutional. The same stage is set for this year. Texas gained two congressional seats, and 95% of our population growth is attributed to an increase in minority residents. For the first time, white and Hispanic residents in Texas make up almost exactly the same share of the population. Mayor Dan Pope says his strategy towards drawing our city council districts is straightforward. What you want to do is make certain that, um, you know, you, uh, every, every vote is counted, one person, one vote. Both the city and the state will start this process in September, aiming to agree on new district borders by December in time for the May elections. It's uh, going to be really interesting to see what the local communities do, especially in these places where uh, the minority populations are growing quicker than the white populations like in London. All right, that's Ryan Chandler reporting. Let's get the county view of this and a lot of things going on with Lubbock County. Judge Curtis Parrish, good to see you again. Good to be here, Brian. Thank you. Uh, take folks specifically uh, what, into what the census numbers mean for Lubbock County as far as funding and how we're viewed by state leadership and what you'll do with those numbers moving forward. Well, uh, as you've reported, Lubbock County has grown. And we've grown fairly dramatically over the last 10 years since our last census. Uh, what this means specifically for the county is that we will need to go in now and redraw the boundaries of our four commissioner's court precinct lines. Uh, that process will begin uh, at the end of September. It'll probably take us around probably 45 days to get those redrawn. And the whole purpose of that is to is to provide balance. Now we know that Lubbock County has had a lot of growth and now we know where that growth has been. I think we instinctively know that we've seen a lot of growth in Southwest and South Lubbock. Mm -hmm. And so those precincts are kind of out of line with the, the rest of the county. So what we need to do is go in, redraw the boundaries, recapture some neighborhoods, put them in 
uh, this precinct, move this line down here so that we can get that uh, equal balance between the four um, commissioner court precinct lines. That can't be easy, though. I well, mean, sometimes neighborhood yeah. to neighborhood. How do you go about that kind of process? Well, it, it, it's really interesting, Brian, because it's really kind of part art and part science. <laughs> you know, so there there is a... I, and, and I love redistricting, by the way. 20 years ago, I... I There's one. Yeah, oh, I do. <laughs> I love it. 20 years ago, uh, I did uh, the redistricting for the city of Lubbock for right. their uh, district lines. 10 years ago, a, as an attorney, I worked with several rural counties and redrawing their lines. So I love redistricting. It's, okay. it's really a great time to look and... You, you look at numbers, uh, you look at demographics, and you try then desperately at that point to make sure that everything is in balance, everything is equal, one one person, one vote, and uh, you just uh, draw those lines based on those criteria. And the city's in this, and school boards are in this, and that, that can't be easy for everyone to sort of get it Any up. Any entity that elects out of a precinct or a district will go through this process over the next two or three months. Um, from the state level, you know, you've got your state representative districts, mm -hmm. uh, you have your uh, state senator districts, you have your Congress, um, you know, the 19th congressional district here in Lubbock um, that's based in Lubbock. You know, we're looking at those numbers. What is Lubbock going to look like? How many counties? Or will Lubbock be the central part of, of a district? Will we have to combine with Amarillo or Midland Odessa right. to make sure that those numbers get balanced? Um, that will all be probably decided, at least by the legislature, in a special session to be called um, probably next month. We'll see, we'll see what we'll happens. We'll see if we can get the other yeah, one. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see how we get yeah. the other one. All right, well, let's talk uh, county projects. Bud budget season kind of coming to a head here. Where do we stand on the county budget process and, and, and what's going to happen and, and how much is being spent and where? Well, this past week we were able to, uh, the commissioner's court, the five members of the commissioner's court, we were able to kind of lock in our budget. Mm -hmm. And and I'm very proud of the budget. It is a needs-based budget. There's, there's not any wants in there. This is all needs. How do we need to uh, run the county from this point forward? Um, I'll, I'll tell you what I like about budgeting and what I don't like. I, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a numbers guy. I'm not an accountant. I'm mm -hmm. an attorney. Right. Um, so, but I, I do know how accountants work and how to get that. But for me, the budgeting time is a public policy time. You know, you, you can look at your own home checkbook, and what you spend your money on is where your priorities are, and that's the same with the county. What are our priorities? And in, in Lubbock County, our number one priority is public safety. And so we want to make sure that we are uh, spending our money on public safety. And so we've done that. Um, we've taken a budget. We've made it uh, what was called a flat budget, the same budget as we had last year, mm -hmm. the same amount of money. There's a little bit of growth money that's come in because we're a growing county. Right. We've applied those to growth. And so we're, we're, we're able then to keep the budget what we call flat. Now, that's not the whole story. Mm -hmm. uh, on Monday, we are going to uh, call an election and ask the voters to walk beside us because what we want to do is we want to infuse an additional $5 million into the Sheriff's Department. And this is for salaries, for disparity pay. There's a couple of um, positions that, that we need to create in the same, Sheriff's same Department. Same sort of issues the city is having with, with their departments. That's correct. Right. And so um, by, by doing this, though, it, it rises the tax rate above what's called the voter approval rate. Mm -hmm. And so in order for us to um, enact this tax rate, we'll need the approval of the voters. And so we're, we will be asking the voters over between now and November to walk beside us to support our sheriff, to support public safety. And I do believe the people of Lubbock County um, will support uh, their police force, will support uh, their sheriff's department, because this is the first job that we have, and, and maybe even the only job we have. Now, we do roads, right. and we do infrastructure, and we do courts. But it all starts with public safety. So just to be clear, taxes generally flat a tad lower. What, we, what you want to do for the sheriff's department will put you over, so that will need to come to a vote of the public. That's correct. That's right. And, and we're, we're looking forward to uh, the conversations that we will be having between now and November the 2nd.
All right, and we will continue our conversation with Judge Parrish here in just a moment and look at how they might be able to spend some of that federal COVID relief money. And for that matter, what's the county's view of the issues surrounding this latest COVID outbreak in response heading into another business and school year? Five more good minutes of answers next on Talking Points.